What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Today, we got a very special guest, man. We, you just coming off a 30-piece last night? Nah, 24. 24? <laughs> you might as well call it a 30. 24-piece. Got Dave on mention with us today. Dave, D, how you feeling? I'm good, man. I'm ready to get to it. Yes, sir. All right, let's jump right into it. So tell me about, you know, the rec center you're involved with and your AAU team. So let's start with the rec center. Tell me more about that and just its impact on you as a player and a person growing up. Yeah, uh, the rec center was like everything, you know, especially growing up. For me, just because my, my grandmother was like the, basically like the owner of the rec center, of Schumann Center, everyone go to. That was kind of like everything. I played all the sports. I played soccer, track, baseball, all of it and everything you can name it. And I always played there. And then as I got older, that's when I kind of started. But um, to go like play for schools and things like that. But the rec center, man, it started my career off like perfect just because it, I always been a competitive guy. And, and the rec center is so big from the small city. It was like everyone wants to win the championship. They want to be that best team in, in, in the in the city. So, man, I think that that made me grow competitively and, and then just being around uh, a lot of older people that has been through, like, the rec center telling you, yo, like, this rec center, like, there's no joke. Like, you, you're you going to get better from this. Um, it might not mean anything right now, but you're going to get better from it in the long run. And just listening to people like that has definitely helped me. And as far as my AU team, um, man, that's also been a big part of my life just because of the people that I met with the AU team, um, the relationships I build with the, with the AU teams. Um, sure. Me playing with the smaller AU team helped me play to a bigger AU team with the Georgia Stars. I mean, without the small, smaller AU team, I wouldn't even have a chance to play with the Georgia Stars. So they kind of helped me there. I mean, as I got older, like I said before, I started going to bigger bigger teams so I get my name out there more and playing as better people and, and just to to, to – for the coaches just to see me play, um, just to see my game. But uh, yeah, I played for South Georgia Kings and the Rebels, uh, the running Rebels. It was kind of the two AU team down there. But, yeah, without them, then I probably wouldn't be the player who I am today. For sure. And I like how you mentioned the rec center because even for me, like growing up, uh, having a rec center in the Bronx, it's like everyone goes there to play. So you're playing right. grown-ass men, like, People your age, little kids, and especially like on the weekends when like the older people come playing, you just gotta step up and man up and you know, play right. against guys who are like 10 years older than you and 15, got that grown man strength. But you can see in your game now, that experience really taught you to play up to your, you know, competition and just, you know, be a dog out there, you know. Sure, that's for yeah. sure. And what was it like to be able to be in a place where, you know, especially now with you be in the league to be able in a place to get back. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's always kind of been on my mind of just giving back because all of the all of the things that my city has done for me and um just mentioning to me um having days like Davion Mitchell Day and mm -hmm. and having he's just for just for me winning the national championship, man. It just means a lot. Like you don't hear too many cities do that, but my city done it for me and I'm just blessed to to have that. And and one thing I wanted to do, like I said before, is give back. And it's kind of been a, a thing on my, my mind of trying to just build another gym because as in, in Hinesville, in a small city, you don't have that many gyms. They're 24-hour gyms, you know what I'm saying? It's like in Atlanta, you do and and things like that. But Savannah, you don't have a 24-hour gym. Hinesville, it's like gyms where it can be 24 hours because just to just to get people out of trouble because I know if I, if, Stay if I had a tweet. Yeah, if I had a 24-hour gym, I think, I don't know, things might be different. Um, I mean, just because I, I really don't know, but I mean, I am in the NBA, but I just think for, for younger kids or people that that wanted to play the game, but it was like, didn't fall in love with the game because it's like, there wasn't a lot of gym to go to because you only go to the gym for six to 10, but I was blessed enough to have a grandmother who who owned the gym. So I get to go to the gym anytime I want. So it was like, it, it made the it made it easy for me just to, to get better and not worried about, man, I got to go here at six and I got to plan my day. I can just go anytime I want. So just to just to build something there um, for, for the little kids. And as far as like the AAU team, I mean, I still have an AAU team, the off night stars, who, mm -hmm. who actually my cousin plays on. Uh, we have a sixth grade and a seventh grade team. Um, just a little things like that, because just because there's not also, like I said before, there's not a lot of AAU teams that, that are really big around there. I mean, just to 
I have the opportunity to have my name on our AAU team and kids play for my team where they can be like, oh, like that's Davion's team. They might have some good players and things right. like that. I just try to do what I can. Um, yeah. Sure. And lastly, let's touch on March Madness real quick, which you know so much about. Speak to like, you know, playing in that, just like the tournament and like what comes with that and the kind of like energy around it. Man, the tournament is like the, the best feeling in college. Well, I mean, as you know, it's um, March Madness and it's just a, a whole different atmosphere. Um, I, I used to love it. I feel like all the lights are on you. Everyone's watching um, and every game matters. You can't, it's like whoever plays the best that night. You know, it's not right. about the best team. It's not about who's more talented. It's like whoever's playing better that night is going to win the game. And I just think that's why the March Madness is so hard to win is because like, you never know. Some team might come out hitting a lot of shots. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You might, you know what I'm saying? You can't really do much about it. If they're hitting crazy shots, it's like, you know, I hit shots, then you, you don't have a tough night. Yeah. You don't got three or four games and be like, Oh, we can beat them here. And things mm -hmm. like that. But yeah. It's like, you got one night, but man, the, the NCAA is, it did everything for me. I think um, in my career, it's just cause I did, my team did a really good job with me and um, basically helping me out, man, get to where I am. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, winning national championship got me where I am today. So after winning the championship, right? So what was it like going back to campus? Man. I'm sure uh, that feeling was like euphoric, like, you know, because already, you already have a good time on campus, you know, with your friends, you got your, your dorm and all that stuff. But to win like at like the biggest stage in college and bring that trophy back to campus. I know you was the man on campus at that point. Like you walk back, like. Yeah, if you, basically, if you play on that basketball team, no matter if you didn't play or yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you on that basketball team, you is a man. Um, <laughs> you is a man, like, it's just because of after winning that national championship, like, I don't think Baylor's won in forever. So it's like everyone basically wanted to show you love. And yeah, it, it was an amazing feeling, especially at the parade when you see, like, all the – everyone come out from the city. Like, mm -hmm. I've never seen people in my life in Waco. I didn't even know that would mean it was people in Waco. Yeah. And it's like, see that – that parade was ridiculous, man. They came out and supported us, and uh, they definitely show love. For sure. And now you're just missing that NBA parade. That's a fact. Yeah, which you're gonna get soon. So, and right. lastly, who's who's your pick to win it all? I know everybody's bracket has you know been busted up because of St. Peter's, but who you got went taking it all since we got the for the the last few teams up? Um, a lot of people. Uh, I think I always said just because uh, Kansas, just because they've been in our, our conference, they have like com the most complete team, I think. Um, yeah. They play, they got really talented players. They got good guards. They got good big man. I, and they play defense. I mean, they play in the Big 12. So they win the Big 12, play defense. So I think Kansas, I think Kansas got the, the best chance. They haven't won in a long time. And I think it's, it's their time. Okay. Shout out to Kansas. But again, that's a wrap. Thank you so much for the time, man. No, nah, thank you. No problem.